most probably I will be able to finish the rest today. Otherwise, it will overflow to uh, next week. But next week would be the uh, last class for you. And uh, end of the month, we will have a revision class. You have to contact the uh, uh, this office to see whether it is an online class or a, a physical class. I'm not sure about it, right? Uh, we're at 1040. Though few people have start, uh, joined in, I will have to start the class, right? Hope all of you are listening. Now. Okay, uh, sorry for the delay, and let's start the presentation now. Uh, today we will be discussing the risk management, right? What is risk? And we will uh, have to finish the Basel 1 and 2 as well, right? So, can you see these two pictures? Where this one, this is a game where you jump and you know that when 100 people jumps maybe one people or two will break the rope and will have consequences but here the situation is different we don't know something like this this is a tsunami picture and something like this will happen or not or even if it happens what will be the damage or the loss? We are not sure. So countable damage, measurable damage is called as a risk. Whereas when we can't measure the damage or when there is an uncertainty, we call it uncertainty, right? This kind of a scenario is not a risk. It is an exceptional situation. But here we know that if, 100 people jumps, maybe one person or two will be dead or hurt, right? So similarly, when you give a loan, we consider a housing loan. When we are giving housing loan, we know that one to two percent will go into NPL. NPL, right? Balance will not go to NPL. So when the risk or the damage, when the damage or the loss can be quantified, that is risk. When the damage or a loss can't be quantified, then it is called a uncertainty. Right? So on our boards, we have different different committees director board we have different committees like board risk committee and board audit committee are the watchdogs of the bank right these two committees need to be headed by independent and non-executive directors right can someone tell me uh, what do you mean by non-executive director or independent director? Non-executive. Just give me the answer for non-executive director. Are you there? Non executive, yes, chairman is a non executive director. How do you classify a executive director and a non executive director?
executive director is a person who gets a salary or re remuneration from the bank like ceos gms they are directors but they are paid as well right so executive directors are people who are paid by the bank for salary then independent directors and non independent directors independent directors are directors who have who has become director without shareholding who does not have a shareholding in the bank right government appointed directors right uh, like mutual fund appointed directors like that who does not have personal interest for the growth of the bank they are independent because they don't have any ownership okay so these two committees need to be headed by two non executive independent directors right because audit is the watchdog like we say we have three lines of defense first line would be you and me the business line who face the customer then second line of defense is the risk which gives the control parameters then third line is the internal audit right internal audit verifies whether the business line and the risk has followed the processes laid down right if a bad loan passes through the business line and the risk internal audit will be at there to stop continuation of it otherwise it will hit the bank right so board board risk committee and board in audit committee has to be headed by two directors who are non executive and independent under board risk committee we have three main committees board credit committee who looks after the credit risk of the bank then alco asset and liability committee who looks after the market risk of the bank then operation risk committee that's the committee who looks after the operation risk of the bank these three are the main risks faced by a bank there are a lot other risks we face right when risk is there we have few ways of accept tackling them you just can avoid right you just cannot avoid don't take in risk be comfortable then you can accept that okay there is a risk and we are okay to take and you go ahead with it then yes we have a risk so we try to reduce the risk like giving different structures taking mortgages taking uh like mortgages giving structures covenants and those things to try to reduce the risk then you have the th fourth one which is the transfer yes we have a risk but we want to transfer it to someone else who is willing to take that risk like a life insurer when we see a key man risk there's one person who looks after everything so there is a key man risk if he dies we have a issue right so we take a life insurance then we are funding the stocks and so if the stocks are destroyed we have a problem so you take a fire insurance burglary insurance we are transferring the risk to someone else in a 
bad situation right so you can say consider avoiding accepting reducing and transferring these are the methods of tackling risk what is risk risk is exposure to present or future loss of profits and o capital risk is the exposure to present or future loss of profit or capital right it could be due to faulty analysis of the current circumstances or future changes in pestly environment risk is exposure to present or future loss of profit or capital due to faulty analysis of the current circumstances or probabilities that means wrong identification of the project evaluation of the project and few or future changes of pesley environment we discuss what is pesley environment is political environment economic social technical legal and we have discussed this in the class previously right so that means this is the macro environment the so yes there is a good business but due to the changes in the macro environment this goes bad and we get a hit on our profits right like tourism industry these days or you give a facility first month it goes bad that means we have not evaluated the customer or identified the customer properly risk management risk risk is present or future loss risk management is assessing the risk planning policies and controls implementing the safeguards and monitoring and evaluating this is a circle it is a cycle circle and a cycle it continues you can't just do it and stop it goes round and round and it will continue to go that's why i told circle and a cycle right you have to identify in anything you have to identify the risk take the precautionary measures implement those identify the precautionary measures ident implement them evaluate and monitor if you need you change otherwise monitor right that way this goes round and round so risk management is the process of measuring or assessing the actual or potential damage of a particular situation and taking necessary action to minimize the effect assessing or measuring the actual or potential damage of a particular situation that means we assess what is the impact of tourism against a hotel then we take the necessary action to minimize the effect we give moratoriums we give grace period to make the cash flows in order to not put that into npl right process of measuring assessing the actual low potential damages of a particular situation and taking necessary actions to minimize we have a hotel you identify measure evaluate the actual low potential damage due to the changes in the macro environment which is a pesley environment take decide what we need to do like give a moratorium implement the moratorium monitor the cash flows if not you go ahead again assess assess identify implement evaluate and monitor so it goes as a it is a cycle circle goes in a cycle right when a bank faces risk there are two types of major risk faced by the bank which is called together called as the financial risk in lending right when you lend you have to face these two 
borrower's risk and the transaction risk. Borrower's risk comes from three other items, which are industry economic risk, industry structure risk, operating risk. Industry economic risk is the inflation market the where the industry is like see what has happened to garment industry because of the pandemic situation market has collapsed you can't do anything industrial structure risk sometimes some industries has a structural risk when you go ahead with that industry, you should know that there is a risk like that. As example, like tea industry. Every May, June, tea factories will face a loss. Fisheries industry. Every December, January, they make a loss. Why? All the boats come to the shore on 24th of December. They will go back after January 1st. So that industry faces a supply constraint during that period. So anyone who fund the industry should know that there is a risk like this in this industry. When you fund a hotel on a normal uh, circumstances you should know there is a off period then a, a season period when you finance an agriculture product you should know there is a season and an off season right? that is industry structure risk operating risk which are errors and frauds which can happen from the customer's side, right? Transaction risk is the risk inherited on the transaction. Wrong terms and condition, wrong maturities, wrong uh, collateral, those things. So whenever we are lending, we have to be mindful about the business, for the industry itself and what we offer the transaction the product we offer so combined we call financial risk okay before going further do you have any thing to ask any or can I proceed further? Yes, no, what? The risk is a different subject. So if you don't understand anything, you should let me know. Right? Okay, I got three answers out of 10 people in the class today. Two more, if some, yes, no. Right. Right, so so risk the we can slice and dice risk to different different types, right? So we can have credit risk, market risk, operation risk, reputation risk, liquidity, legal, regulatory. You can name any number of them. Uh, risk, right? 
risk is the only unavoidable thing after what change change is the only constant thing in the world right similarly every second every millisecond every nanosecond we face risk different kind of risk so the main risk are credit market operation reputation liquidity like this right so but our subject revolves around credit risk we will be discussing about the credit risk we have market risk which arises from interest rates commodities like gold crude oil trading those things currency foreign currency equity which is the share market whereas operation risk is the risk associated with who happen from people processes procedures and systems which is process risk infrastructure uh, risk and model risk right so any risk arising from people processes procedures and systems we call operation risk like frauds uh, it can be a fraud it can be a mistake it can be a robbery it can be a environmental damage or anything okay. so transaction risk sorry credit risk comes in two lines which is transaction risk and the portfolio concentration risk as a layman term what is credit risk credit risk is will i get my money back right You can see the board here. Credit risk. It is two folds. When the bank is here, we have depositors. We have borrowers. Right? Can you see the board? Right. Right. When the depositor gives us money, money, right? That means that he is casa, all those things. Depositor face a credit risk. Will the bank give me money back as agreed? Right? You know what happened to the finance? Golden key. Right? They have deposited ETI, Formal Finance. Right? They have deposited money, but whenever a customer deposits money in a finance institution, Depositors face the credit risk. Will I get my money back as agreed? Or the will the counterparty pay me back as agreed? Right? Similarly, when the bank give a loan, bank face the credit risk. Will the counterparty or the borrower face as agreed? Right? Credit risk is that. Will the counterparty pay, settle us as agreed? Whenever there is an uncertainty that the counterparty will not honor the payment as agreed, it is called credit risk. Credit risk derived from two things. Transaction. 
transaction and concentration. What is transaction? Whenever customer, whenever bank thinks customer will not pay us in full, then it is credit risk. When the bank thinks customer will not pay. Right? Or when a facility is more than 90 days in areas, that means NPL. I gave you classifications last week. Right? Three types. Specially mentioned, substandard, doubtful, and loss. Right? So, credit risk is the risk that the counterparty will not honor the payments as agreed. Right? Or the answer T that the counterparty will not pay. So, it arises from transaction. When the bank thinks that the customer will not pay, it is great risk, painful, then concentration will come. Then other one is when the facility is more than 90 days in areas, it is great. Right? So there is a customer who pays good, zero days, regular. Now, 30, 60, 90, delinquent into areas, 30 days areas, 6 days areas. This is not credit risk. Right? Is any areas, but he pays. This is liquidity. Risk he is not paying properly, but he pays. Bank does not think that we will lose everything, and customer is not in areas more than 90 days. So, this is liquid risk. When the customer cross this line, it is credit risk. Even if the customer is here. And the bank thinks he will not pay me. Then this is credit risk. Right? Then we go to concentration risk, which comes from name and sector. Any single, what is concentration risk? Any single or group of exposures related or unrelated, if goes bad, create a material impact to the cooperation of the bank. What is concentration risk? A single or group of exposures related or unrelated if goes bad create a material impact to the bank's cooperation, not cooperation, cooperation the main operation. That is called concentration. Then, this name concentration, a single person, yeah, one person, or a group of companies, right? 
इसे हेली दामनी के पैर हेली इज इज अ ग्रुप ऑफ कंपनी सो कंसंट्रेशन कम फ्रॉम सिंगल ओ ग्रुप ऑफ एक्सपोजर्स रिलेटेड देन वी हैव सेक्टर which is is a hotel sector right or tourism sector it is not related there are hotels but they are not all related related or unrelated right this is a group of companies which are related here it is a sector they are not related right so this is called name concentration this is called sector or segment concentration right so that is the credit risk Right. Risk due to the uncertainty in a counterparty's ability to meet its obligation in accordance with agreed upon terms. Right? Then this the see, just go through it. So this is the trade risk. Then this is what I told you. Credit default risk, or transaction risk, and the concentration there. The risk associated with single low exposure group of exposures with the potential to produce large enough losses to the threaten a bank's core operation. That is the concentration. It may arise in a single name concern or industry concentration. Default. the risk of loss when the bank consider that the obligo is unlikely to pay its credit obligations in full right or the obligo is more than 90 days past due then it is credit risk sound practices for managing credit risk these are the four headings establish an appropriate credit risk environment operate under sound credit granting process maintain an appropriate credit administration measurement and monitoring process ensure adequate control over credit risk if they ask what are the sound practices of credit managing credit risk this is the answer establish an appropriate credit risk environment operate under sound credit granting process maintain an appropriate credit administration measurement and monitoring process ensure adequate control over the credit risk right let's go back to the board Right. This is the credit process, right? Origination 
and evaluation approval Commitment Disbursement Recoveries Sorry, don't put it recoveries Collection Right? So you originate, evaluate, approve, commit the facility, disperse money goes out, then monthly we pick up collection. Then it goes good, it will be recovered. Else it will be foreseeable, well low, legal recoveries. Right? Prior to going out the money, this part is called free sanction monitoring. This diagram is not there in any handout. This part is called post sanction. monitoring then you have something called EWS we have discussed this as well right so from here to here we have credit documentation then from here to here, you have credit administration, right? Then all this process, the entire process is covered by an umbrella on credit policy right then this credit, there are small umbrellas within credit policy which is segment like SME corporate related. then you have smaller small umbrellas within this small umbrella which is product Morning, leasing, term loans, like that you have this. So this is the entire credit process of the bank. Credit policy is the first important point. Maintain a appropriate, what was this? Establish an appropriate credit environment. Credit policy is the high level lending guideline given to the bank. Who is giving you the lending guideline? That is the board of directors. So the approving authority of the credit policy is board of directors. They have to regularly look at this credit policy that is, through credit policy only credit process guides through who is the custodian of credit policy that is the risk department 
right? You have two things here. C R D credit review and L R M loan review mechanism. This is credit review. Prior to approval, they try to put the credit into perspective. Like frontline people, they look good, 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 anything good. But they are independently look at the business. So they will put the credit into perspective. LRM, which is the other part of the risk, they will see whether the approving authorities are performing good. Is there any bad trend? This is the main pointing error done by the approving authority. That is to stop any continuation of bad practices. Right? So this is the risk part. So the board of directors need to approve this. Risk department needs to prepare this with the assistance of the business line right so the risk department is the custodian of the credit policy but they alone can't prepare a credit policy they have to take the assistance of business line so the owners of the risk policy credit policy is the board of directors custodian is the risk department so board of directors need to regularly revisit the credit policy and once approved, management need to be in line with that policy. Right? establish an appropriate credit risk environment board directors should review credit risk strategy periodically senior management implement the credit risk strategy approved by the board then the second one operate under sound credit granting right that means credit granting process should be sound what we have been learning is this criteria should be thoroughly understanding of the borrower whenever you grant a credit you should have a thorough understanding of the borrower we should know the purpose structure of the credit source of repayment the spices of credit is here then establish overall limits sector limits customer limits those things they have to have a clear established process for approving new credit right that means there has to be a format of approval there has to be a recommenders there has to be independent reviews there has to be approving delegation extension of credit must be on arm's length this is ate duri that means we should not cross the borders you should not take all advantage from a customer and try to approve no you have to be you should do an independent job when you are evaluating a credit then we goes to the maintain a credit administration measurement and monitoring process i told you till the line this is the business line who is operating from there it is the credit administration function you have the credit administration unit right have an independent system for ongoing administration of various risk bearing portfolios right that means we have different portfolios we have high risk portfolios like the credit cards and the TODs, whereas we have short 
short term loan we have secured long term loans uh, housing loans like that we have different different risk bearing portfolios so these portfolios should be handled properly and independently develop an internal risk rating system that means each and every exposure should be rated what do you mean by a risk rating risk rating is the credit worthiness we briefly touched upon that last week risk rating is the credit worthiness will this customer pay what is the probability this customer will pay triple a being the best default the lowest is the default right what is the probability this customer will pay so each and every customer should be ranked rated right then have an information system and analytical technique that enable management to measure trade risk of on and off balance sheet activities we should have a proper mis system and should be able to provide information it has to be on balance sheet and off balance sheet what is on balance sheet and off balance sheet on balance sheet are the term loans credit card any facility where the funds goes out of the bank's cash flow as soon as it is granted on balance sheet off balance sheet are the contingent facilities like we take the responsibility only on behalf of a customer if the customer defaulted it will become a balance sheet we are just committee those are off balance sheet system for monitoring overall composition of quality of and quality of the trade portfolio that means you should have a system continuously monitor the portfolio and the quality whether there is is a bad trend of going to irregular like that you have to compare right consider future changes in economic conditions when assessing individual credit so pesli environment is a key right currently we are worried about the tourism industry worried about contracts construction industry right so those kind of things ensure adequate control over credit risk system of independent ongoing credit review i showed you crd and lrm crd crd is a mild version of lrd lrm crd tries to direct the credit to the proper way why it is mild because money has not gone out so you can still you are in the protect safer side but once you give out the money whether it is long term or short term money has gone out so lrm tries to protect the bank on a continuous trends if the approving authority is not bothered about risk lrm will come and fight it if the approving authority all the facilities granted goes bad then lrm will have a issue so it is the nail on your head so system of independent ongoing credit review these two people will do the reviews then you have to have annual short term facilities annual reviews is a must that is to see whether the customer is operating properly any changes 
to the initial expected risk level. Credit guarantee function is properly handled and credit exposures are within limits. Proper DLA, delegation of authority, sector segmentation, sector exposure, those things. Then system for managing problem credit. Recovery is that is the last part. You should identify bad credit faster. We discuss about watch listing, early warning signals, watch listing, and then the recoveries. Right? So that is that one. Mitigation of credit risk. We look at risk based pricing. I told you about a theory called risk return trade off. That is higher the risk, higher the return, lower the risk, lower the return. So that based on that, we go on risk based pricing. Higher the risk, higher the price, lower the risk, lower the price. Then we put covenant. We have already discussed positive covenants and negative covenants or affirmative covenants or restrictive covenants. Right? You need to submit insurance policy is the affirmative. But you can't give more than 50% dividend payout, then it is a restrictive covenant. Tightening, that means when the customer goes bad, whatever the undisbursed amount, you can stop giving to him. So that is called tightening. Diversification, we should not put all our money into one basket. So your money basket should have different, different eggs. That means different segments, different industries, different products, different people like that. That is diversification. Covenants again, negative and affirmative. Credit risk checklist, stringent credit standards for borrowers and counterparties, strict portfolio risk management. That is the first is the intake, second is the management part. Constant focus on changes in economic or other circumstances that that is the pestly environment. So this handout gives you market risk and operation risk and those all those things. I'm not going to speak to you. I used to teach these things also to the your level, but I found that they are not asking questions, but I, I didn't want to take this out. So I left it for your reading, right? Reputation risk, market risk, liquid risk. Right, summary. Then we will go to this one. Prior to that, do you have any question? I'm going to start Basel. Before that, you have any questions? Yes, no, I need to see. Are you okay up to now? The risk is a deal. No means no questions. Okay. Credit administration process. This one, credit administration. Jain, is it okay? Credit administration start from here. 
Jayani? Right. Anyone else? Can I proceed? Not one yes. What about others? Right. So So we will be discussing role of capital, different type of capital, key concept of behind regulatory capital, those things. These are keywords, key words and key institutions. BIS, Bank for International Settlement, right? Prior to that, Basel, what is Basel? Basel is, a, Basel is a city in Switzerland. So all these regulation, Basel regulation start from there. So headquarters of BIS, Bank for International Settlement is in Basel. That's how the word Basel came in. So Bank, of, Bank for International Settlement is considered to be the central bank for central banks, but it can't impose any regulation, but they can issue directions. Then you have IB Fed, which is the International Banking Federation. Banking associations are the members of this organization. IB Fed have become main forum to address legislative regulatory work of the banking industry again it is not a <coughs> law enforcement body then comes the bcbs basel committee on banking supervision which is the main body or the forum where we discuss enhance the understanding of supervisor issues and the quality of banking supervision where we discuss the super banking supervision function <coughs> central banks or the authorities who is responsible for banking supervision represent the country there yeah. so all the regulation generate from here why the basel came in the the Basel regulation came in because 1974 there was a bank called Hazard Bank in Germany. <coughs> Hazard Bank in Germany, they were doing larger transactions, right? But if that transaction goes bad, that bank will have to be wiped out. So the, when they did this transaction, German authorities found it out and they closed the bank. Right? It was a chaos thing because there is a transaction, there is no way to debit. No way to debit. Right? So they, this uh, bank for international settlement, they created a committee to look at these kind of issues. Then they decided, okay, let any bank compete in the international market, but they have to be in the same size, same ability to stomach out if something goes bad. Right? 
if you are small you do small businesses and grow if you are big you may fight for the big fish small you catch the small fish and gradually grow big fish banks you can stay in the big market so meaning you are playing with the depositors money if something goes bad and you get a hit depositors will have a issue right therefore you should not do things which is beyond your capacity right we have different types of losses we have expected loss unexpected loss and exceptional loss i'll start with the exception loss tsunami is a exception loss we will we don't know what will happen we don't know whether it will happen like that so you are not bothered about it right then we have expected loss expected loss is the expected damage we will create in this year that's why we generate we allocate provision or impairment right we factor the impairment into our pricing if we think that housing will have a big similar to our projection on turnover and asset book growth we project the provision requirement as well so we know exactly what is the amount of profit we are going to allocate for bad loans so we factor it to the pricing so expected loss is not a risk again it is factored through provisioning or impairment then the risk is the unexpected loss that means we expect something which is but the loss is beyond the expectation so that is unexpected that kind of a scenario you can't pass that loss to the depositors lenders to you you have to have your own funds to tackle that kind of a thing that your own fund is called capital so we want capital to tackle any unexpected loss expected loss is tackled by provisioning exceptional losses you are not bothered about it, right so what bas has said you should have adequate capital to do business you should have your own money partly to finance your loans balance part you can borrow but you should have some money so if something goes bad you can take the risk to you and let the customers be safe role of capital that is the absorb larger unexpected losses i as i told you now protect the depositors and other claim holders you bear if something goes bad you suffer not the depositors provide them enough confidence to external investors and rating agencies look at the five c's of credit what is the third one capital right this is capital capital adequacy requirement provide buffer against bank losses protect creditors in the event of bank failure create disincentive for the excessive risk taking right whenever you want to take a risk you need give a loan you need to have your own funds as well so it limits you there are different types of capital economic capital and estimate of level of capital that the firm required to operate this business which is called the risk capital as well regulatory capital rc that is the level of capital the regulator wants you to keep in the bank and the bank capital that is the 
actual capital we have based on the operation level what is the capital that is economic capital as per the regulator what is the capital that is reg uh, regulatory capital what we actually have is bank capital capital again we have three tiers right co capital o tier 1 capital supplementary capital o tier 2 capital o tier 3 capital right capital is of three types tier 1 o co capital that is you own funds profit and those thing supplementary capital that is the second tier third tier is tier 3 right so co capital goes in paid up capital that is our share capital non cumulative preferred shares preferred shares are normally cumulative if you don't pay this year it will go to next year but common shares if you don't pay this year no dividends for that year so non cumulative preferred shares paid up capital is the share common shares then non cumulative preferred shares disclose reserves general and legal reserves profitability reserve pnl reserve right that is co capital then you have supplementary capital which is of lower quality than the previous one which are provisions general loan loss provision undisclosed reserves then you can take loans five year unsubordinated loans then you can have debentures that kind of a dip instruments then you have tier 3 capital which is covered by two year unsubordinated short term loan tier 2 it is five year unsubordinated this is two year sorry subordinated sorry subordinated right so capital when you talk about capital capital is co capital supplementary capital plus tier 3 capital minus deduction which is investment in consolidated banking and financial subsidiary companies investment in unconsolidated banking and financial subsidiary companies and investment in the capital of other banks and financial institutions minus goodwill so those things you have to deduct when you are looking at capital this we discussed the reason was to create level playing field for international active banks why basel was needed banks from different countries competing for the same loan would have to set aside roughly the same amount of capital how is the banks are funded i think i showed you this right banks are funded tmd or fds 
Casa Term rules obtained by the bank Money market Capital Right This is the way the banks are funded But Basel says you should have your own funds if you want to lend. If you want to lend 100 rupees, you should have X amount of your own funds. Balance you can borrow from any of these methods plus Y is the borrowed money. It should be equal to 100. Right? Your own funds. This is the borrowed fund. Right? This is Basel. So Basel, no Hazard Bank collapsed in 1974. This Basel committee started 1988 and it became effective by 1992, which is the Basel one. Initially, it was discussing only about credit risk. We thought that is the main risk in banks, lending or the Credit risk. Then there was a modification in 1996, 2004, Basel II came in. Now we are the Basel III. Snapshot of Basel I the purpose was to prevent international banks from building business volume without adequate capital backing. The focus was on credit risk, set minimum capital standard for the banks. We'll come to the minimum capital adequacy shortly. Be became effective at the end of 1992. A new concept, risk-based capital, was introduced by Basel. Minimum capital adequacy ratio, right? Minimum capital adequacy ratio or cook ratio. He was the chairman of the Basel committee, Peter Cook. Right? He was the chancellor of Bank of England. Capital divided by risk. Weighted assets are the new risk weighted asset. Right? They initially started with saying it should be equal to 8%. Right? Minimum capital adequacy ratio should be equal to 8%. What does that mean? If you want to lend 100 rupees, very layman term. You should have your own group, 8 rupees and 92 rupees you can borrow. It should be 8 plus 92 This is the very, very basic layman term explanation on capital adequacy, minimum capital adequacy. If you want to lend, 100 rupees, you should have your own rupees as per 8%. 8 rupees of your own funds capital and 92 rupees you can borrow and lend. This capital means tier 1 capital, tier 2 capital, now it is tier 3 capital as well, minus deductions which are investment in unconsolidated 
banking and finance companies and investment in banking sector right minus goodwill that is capital Right. This is the uh, this, this one, Cook Ratio, Peter Cook, Bank of England, Chairman of the Basel Committee, MCA, Minimum Capital Adequacy Ratio. Right. Then, Basel introduced, I told you, it is 100%, 100 rupee, this is 100 rupee here, which is the asset address is the loan right if this hundred bars are told no we talk about risk weight there are four risk categories four risk categories right which is these are the four risk categories 0 20 50 and 100 right if you lend against cash or gold held in bank or, or lend to OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, there are 35 countries in that list, like US, Canada, UK, Netherlands, Mexico, like that, there are so many countries. If you lend to any one of those countries or US Treasury, you don't need to allocate funds your risk weight is zero if you lend to oecd bank security issued by u.s government agencies claim on municipalities it is 20 percent if it is residential mortgages it is 50 percent and any other one whether it is for abc Perra or google or ibm it is 100%. How does that work? It works like this. Capital divided by risk weight into asset so risk weights are 0 20 50 100 right so we say you need to give 100 rupees minimum capital and if you sum you need to give 100 to be cash back this is going to be infinity capital divided by zero this into this zero so it is infinity so you know that means what if it is for zero risk base you don't need cap you own capital you can borrow everything and lend it we assume that there is no risk. Then we take 20%. 20% is what? 5. Give this again. So 20%. And so that is okay. Then it is fifty percent. Your capital is five requirement. Sorry, I'm sorry. Twenty percent, twenty into asset is hundred. Right. 
is equal to 8%. So, 8 divided by 100 into 20. One point six rupees. Right? When it is 50, you need 4 rupees. When it is 100, you need 8 rupees. Right. So if you multiply the asset hundred with the this way, then plus multiply to this one. Right? So this is the calculator. See, when you have different risk weight, your capital requirement differ. Initially it was zero, then it came to 1.6 rupees, 4 rupees, or 8 rupees now fully. Right? So that is the initial thinking. Okay. So these are the respects. Then initial thinking was that. This is the sum, the same thing. This is Basel 1. Focus on a single risk measure, that is the credit risk we were focusing on. Then one size fits all, all the other, like zero risk was what? Cash, gold, or US treasury. Then 20% risk, OECD banks, or municipalities like that. 50 residential mortgages, whether it is ABC Perra or Google, it is same. So you can play with your capital, the same amount of capital. Same amount of capital, you can go for very good credit or you can go for high risk credit. So your profitability changes. Like there was a modification in 1996 which added the market risk, but they never spoke about operation risk under Basel 1. Whereas Basel 2, like Basel 1 was very rigid. They just gave four categories and everything has to be that. Basel 2 started emphasizing on banks' internal risk methodologies. If you are handling your risk properly, your capital requirement will be lower. Then you have the, it is, uh, Basel II is a three pillar mechanism where internal controls on your thing, then the supervisor will have a supervisor review and the market discipline. Internal, supervisory and market discipline. So each risk category, you will have different different methods to do. If you are sophisticated, if you are very good in managing your risk, you can use different methods to reduce the capital requirement. And the Basel II operation risk also considered. Right, Basel II, I don't want to rush. I will take you through next week. And because next week we don't have much things to do. So I will take Basel 2 to the next week, right? So if you have any questions, you can ask me now. 50% applies for residential mortgages. residential mortgages. If no questions, we'll close it today. 
and we'll meet next week next week is your last class so i will finish this one then i have another one more lecture to finish i'll do that uh here, today i have given several uh, handouts you need all hand, uh, few of those handouts next week as well uh, there is an additional lecture on basel which is additional reading you can do it gives several additional information so you can go through that as well there is a uh, wait separate word handout i will use that next week commercial property it is 100% they didn't bother about the risk weights under basel 2 basel 1 which are the only residential mortgages they gave 50% any other thing it was 100% capital requirement whether secured or unsecured they didn't bother about security under basel 1 basel 2 they gave different thing anything else if no we'll call it a day and thank you